Hi everybody, welcome to my beginner's guide how to play better at the medic in Battlefield 5. Uh, this is PlayStation 4 gameplay. But before we get into specifically medic class um, things, let's talk about the general Battlefield goals you should have that will make you better at Battlefield anyway, no matter which uh, class you're playing at. And the first thing is, when you're playing Battlefield, you should always spawn in and stick with your squad. So that when you're at the spawn screen, Look, see where your, where your teammates are, you know, there's little green dots, little squad mates, sorry, little green dots, and spawn in on them. If you find yourself by yourself, with no squad mates, um, press the options, go to the squads menu, and then join a squad that's got some people in. Uh, because th there's no point playing by, by yourself, even if you decide to be a lone wolf and go and do your own thing. Because when you've got squad mates on the battlefield, what it enables you to do is spawn on them. Otherwise, you're constantly spawning on either captured flags or your home spawns, um, which means you can end up doing a lot of running. Whereas if you've got squad mates, generally they'll be in the action. And so you can spawn on them, spawn with the action, and have a much better time, score more points, and generally enjoy the game a lot more. Next thing, Battlefield is all about capturing or defending objectives, not about kills. Now, kills are great fun, don't get me wrong, but in order for your team to win and for you to get even more points, you want to be capturing those objectives, you know, getting on them. Um, getting kills on objectives gives you even more points, um, and that, that will definitely help you go up that leaderboard. And just remember as well, when you are capturing objectives, don't always use the direct route. Don't, don't go from A to B you know, in a straight line. Take a loop and get to the flanks. Get to those sides when you're attacking objectives. I know spotting has really been nerfed in Battlefield 5, but you can still use it to highlight enemy positions. And if you spot a vehicle or an aeroplane, that will come up as such on everybody's mini-maps. Um, and remember, everybody in this game, not just you as a medic, everybody can revive teammates, but only, sorry, squad mates, but only do it when it's safe. As a medic, you're the only one who can revive anybody who's been downed, um, but anybody in the squad can revive someone else. But again, try and only do it when it's safe. And you can kind of summarise all this up as PTFO or, you know, play the objective, and if you do, you'll definitely get a lot more out of Battlefield. So, now let's talk about what you should be doing as a medic. And let's start off with two primary medic goals as I see them. And the first one is you should keep moving with and you could tr should try and stay close to your squad mates and teammates when you're on offense or defense. Because your job is to keep res resupplying them with meds, with bandages, you know, so that they can keep on fighting. Otherwise what happens is, say an assault player comes up to an objective, he takes some damage, he's then got to wait you do get some self-healing happen, but you can't heal up to full health, and you become very, very vulnerable then as well. Whereas if you're there lobbing bandages at them, they can quickly heal, and they can get on with fighting and killing all the enemies. Um, or some of the things they also might do is they might run backwards and go and try and find a first aid um, supply dump, you know? Really disengaging from the fight and leaving you at a numerical disadvantage. Now, no other class can do this. No other class can go around lobbing out bandages. So it's so important that the medics keep doing that. The next thing, your next primary goal, is to keep moving with and staying close to your squad mates and teammates when you're on offense or defense. But you also now need to be reviving them as well because although as I said, squad mates can revive squad mates. It's very slow. You're the only one who can revive people very, very quickly, and you can revive anybody on your team. And again, this is all about keeping that momentum going in offensive or defensive operations. If someone dies and then you know they're hanging around waiting for a medic, and the medics aren't really doing anything, um, especially if you can see a medic on your screen, you know it says he's 10 meters away. You're like, come on, buddy. <laughs> Come and get me, and they don't. You've wasted all that time. They've wasted all that time on the spawn screen. If everybody's in combat, they might not be able to spawn on you. They might have to spawn a couple of hundred meters away, and they've got to run back to the battle. But by getting those, getting those revives in, you can keep the people in your area, in that immediate battlefield, fighting the fight, keeping that momentum going, keeping that push going, or stopping a push from the enemies. Now. What's really important as well is that if you're going to go and revive someone, always try and spot them first. Because if you press the spot button, that's the shoulder button on the consoles, top right shoulder button, that will tell them, look, I'm on the way, I'm coming to get you. Don't, don't respawn 
Um, and hopefully lots of people will see this and go, ah, oh, excellent. Now some people will not want you to um, revive them, maybe so they've run out of ammo, um, or they're not happy with the situation they're in. But most people, when you say, yeah, I'm on the way, they'll s they'll hang around, you know, lob a smoke grenade at them using your s using your uh, smoke grenade rifle to cover the position, and then get in there and get get that revive. Also, what you find is, especially when you're reviving squad mates, you know, the people with the green icons, this really builds up squad coherence um, between you and you and your, you know, even complete strangers. You know, you get a couple of good revives in on someone in your squad, they will start reviving you as well, and the whole squad will start playing together. And again, when we're talking about momentum, in, in Battlefield. That really helps because the squad's looking after the squad. The, the support guys will keep keep launching um, ammo at you. You'll keep firing bandages at them. The assault guys will be charging in. Your snipers will be spotting people and you'll be picking them up when they get down. And it really does lead to um, winning the uh, sort of best squad accolades at the end of the match. But more importantly, you have more fun as well. Um, because we can't always play with our buddies where we can talk to each other and say, come and get me, come and get me. But playing with strangers, even though you're not on voice comms, can be very effective as well. And those revives help to bring that uh, that team together. So, secondary goals. Let's talk about those. Now, I'm a big fan of the smoke grenade rifle. And you should be using it to create smoke screens for your teammates and squad mates when they're capturing or defending objectives. So, um, on offense, for example, is if you're running towards uh, an objective and there's open ground. Now, you get your smoke grenade out, a smoke grenade rifle out, and you fire a couple of smoke grenades, and that will create a smoke screen so your buddies can then attack that objective um, while the enemies are blinded. You know, it blinds those snipers, blinds those LMGs, and you'll be able to take that much better. I mean, you can either put the smoke in front of the objective or right on top of them that way. You can also use smoke grenades, uh, the smoke grenade rifle, really good on defense as well. Say you're defending an objective, and especially if any enemy armor turns up, you know, and there's a tank, you know, 50, 50 to 100 meters away, starts putting down some heavy fire, and you're like, oh god, we're gonna get zapped. Bang a couple of smoke grenades between you and that tank. The tank can't see you guys anymore. That again then gives your assault guys a chance to flank around and take on that tank, or maybe even sort of to move away, but to reposition, but generally to halt that uh, heavy fire that's coming in. So smoke grenades very, very useful. Obviously, you're going to use them when you're reviving people um, to cover them as well. And the next thing is, just because you're med medic, don't forget that you can still build fortifications, you can still build ammo and medic dumps um, to help your teammates. Especially things like when you get when you capture your objective, you know, you're the medic, make sure that the, the medic, uh, the, the medicine dump, the first aid dump has been built. <laughs> you know? So you can do that. And often, as well, the ammo dump as well, because you can't um, resupply your own ammo, apart from picking up stuff off dead people or if... Um, or if your support teammates throw ammo at you. So build that one as well. So, in summary for med the medic then, I'd say with the weapons and gadgets at your disposal, um, with your ability to infinitely self-heal yourself and quickly revive teammates, I think the medics really are the class that holds offensive and defensive pushes together. They keep that momentum going when you're taking objective. Um, your teammates get damaged, you throw the bandages, they keep on going. And again, on defense, when an objective, say, gets bombed, you know, say, a uh, Stuka comes on and kills other people, or you've got the new artillery barrage that comes up, if you can run around and revive all your teammates, or at least some of them, before the enemy can, can take advantage of all those deaths, all of a sudden you're holding that objective, you've blunted the uh, enemy's push and you're putting your whole team in a much much better situation using smoke grenades to create cover you know for offensive or defense um, and to revive people is really good and there's kind of this whole argument I think as well that the medic class could be the strongest one about to revive because of that ability to quickly and infinitely self heal um, because you can just stay alive for longer you can tickle the edges of objectives I'll do a video about that soon, but that is when, you, when you're taking an objective, you don't go straight in, you just tickle the side, you go in a little bit, say kill someone, you come out, you go around to another angle, you kill somebody again, while you're waiting for the for your teammates or your squad mates to catch up with you so you can push properly. 
Um, but just remember, um, stick with your squad mates, keep those med packs and revives coming, and keep that smoke coming as well. Okay, so that's kind of a little bit about the tactics and strategies you should be using, the goals you should be using. What we'll look at next is uh, the actual loadouts that you might want to consider running as a medic class. Right, let's take a look at um, maybe some of the loadouts you could use as a medic in, in Battlefield 5. So, let's start off at the top, combat role. At the moment we've got field medic or combat medic. With the field medic you get additional requisition for your squad by providing them with bandages. I'm not really sure what requisition is, I think that's points, you know, that go towards um, the score streaks, the... Um, um, the reinforcements you can call in. Um, swift effort trait. Now this is good. You sprint faster when calling out to a down friend in need of a medic. You know how I mentioned earlier the fact that it's really important that if you see someone and you're going to go for a revive, tell them that you're doing that by hitting on the consoles anyway, the top right bumper, um, so the spotting button in effect, and they'll get the message on their screen saying incoming medic. And that means you can then, you know, fire a smoke grenade if you need to, you'll run quicker and you'll revive them rather than rather than them hitting the respawn button and disappearing just as you, as you get there. Now you could also try combat medic where you, you're better with melee weapons and you run faster when you're low on health. I like the idea of being able to run faster to downed uh, squad mates and teammates because I think that's integral to what the medic should be doing. Um, you know, going around healing people and reviving them to keep the momentum going of an offense or a defense you know, to keep everybody there where you are rather than them waiting in the spawn screen waiting to come in so yeah i would go with field medic um right weapon so the sten gun the one you start off with is very very good um what you might have to do is when you get it to level four um Let's go back. Uh, specializations. You may want to change the specializations to make it more suitable. I, what I like to do with most of my guns is make them more accurate when I'm standing still, and that makes them better at range. So quick aim is kind of an obvious one, because you want to be able to aim down sights quicker. Ported barrel, so it recoils less horizontally. Barrel bedding, improve accuracy and aim fire when you're stationary, and recoil buffer so it recoils less up upwards. So it's for the for the Sten, it's all about making it more stable. So I'm almost using it like an assault rifle at medium and sometimes long range as well. You can, you can tap fire at people. So the Sten is very good. Um, and then the gun I've been using an awful lot ooh, is the um, MP40. Um, been very much enjoying the MP40. Um, I kind of again set it up the same as the Sten, so we've got quick aim, ported barrel for less horizontal recoil, barrel bending for um, more accuracy when I'm standing still, um, and the recoil buffer for less horizontal. And that works very well for me. It's still a hit fire monster. You know, when you're next to people, you can you can black them without aiming down sights, you know, and it's really good. Oh, and the sight I use is the uh, the standard. Um, Latty sight. I think that's really good and I would like to see that sight on some of the assault rifles I think. Um, so that's the gun, MP40 or Sten. Um, sidearm, it's up to you. I'm, I'm using the M1911 at the moment but I might well change it up to something like the, the Mark the Mark 6 revolver, something with a bit more power. Probably the 1911 is often you, unless you hit every single shot when you're firing at people, you don't end up killing them and it get, they have enough time to reload their main weapon and shoot at you. Um, so I might try the Mark um, the Mark 6, but for now the M1911. Uh, the knife, I've got the Kukri, um, whatever you like. I mean, I don't get that many melee kills. Now, gadgets. I think this is really important. So we'll start off with the middle one, start off with bandages. Now. The reason being is that the medical crate works different in Battlefield 1 than it did in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield... Sorry, it works different in Battlefield 5 than it did in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4. What used to happen is when you put down a medical crate, people were in in its area of uh, influence would automatically be be healed and and 
uh, get better if you like but in battlefield 5 they don't you've got to run up to it and you've got to pick up the stuff that's inside you have they have to interact with it and that's why i think the bandages are much better because you just throw them at people you just keep throwing them at people as they're as they're coming up to, as, as, the, as they need it you'll get the little icon saying they need bandages they've used their bandages in other words and you just lob it at them it, it requires no effort on their part and you can just keep throwing them at them and that's the best way to do it, i think so i would definitely have the bandages um i would i think it's frag grenade or smoke grenades is an interesting one all the incendiary I think the frag grenade is useful in lots of dis different situations, especially when you're fighting near houses and you can throw a frag grenade through a window and you might get a kill. One of the nice things about Battlefield 5 is there is a lot less grenade spam because the grenades have such long timers on them. You know, you throw a grenade and it doesn't go off radio, so if one lands next to you, you tend to have enough time to get away. There is an argument for the smoke grenade. Um, again, when I was talking earlier about using smoke to uh, cover uh, people who are down so you can revive them safely um, or use it as cover for when you're on the offense to um, create a smoke screen or on the defense um, so there's an argument for that and there's also an argument for the incendiary grenade now incendiary grenades are very good um, to clear rooms obviously and an area de area denial effects Especially in games like, well, we've just had Rush added, haven't we, for a short period of time. But Frontlines, um, actually not really Frontlines. Um, yeah, sorry, Frontlines or, or or Breakthrough. Anything where you've got an air, a, a, what could be a small area, like a, an NCOM or a telegraph station, where somebody might be on it, say, um, disarming it, but maybe you can't see them because they're on the other side, where you can throw an incendiary grenade and it will spread fire around that area. Also, they're very useful if you're, say, in a firefight with someone and they duck behind cover, you can throw the incendiary grenade to one side and that fire will go around that cover and take them out. So you could you know, could use the incendiary grenade. Um, however, <laughs> personally, I stick with the frag grenade because I think it, it's useful in more situations. And then we have the, the what I think is the super useful gadget that the med... Uh, the medics have the smoke grenade rifle so as i say as you're when someone gets downed and you spot them to say I, i'm coming to get you you fire a smoke grenade at them as well and that will then cover them and create a safe smoke green so you can then revive them in safety so that's that's something you should automatically do most of the time unless you know it's a safe situation the other th thing w which it's very very good for is when you've got uh, you're taking a objective you're a medic so you're up there with the assault players and you're on the tip of the spear and there's some open ground to cover, you know, and the enemies are all on the objective behind sandbags. Maybe they've got heavy machine guns and that they're firing at you. And you can just lob smoke at them. You can put it on top of the objective or slightly in front of it. And it will allow your players to approach and attack that objective, avoiding that gunfire by going through that smoke screen. Or alternatively, you're on defense and say there's a tank <laughs> starts firing at you maybe from the distance. Um, you can fire a quick smoke grenade between you and that tank and that will cover for a few short seconds um, your teammates that will give them time to um, reposition it will give time for your assault players maybe to flank around and start firing at the tank with their uh, panzer house um, all that sort of stuff very very useful tool the smoke grenade much more useful i would say than the anti-personnel mine um, so i would i would definitely go with the uh, with the smoke grenade rifle so there we go as far as loadouts that's the loader I've been using very effectively. Field Medic, MP40, 1911, Kukri, Frag Grenade, um, Bandages, and Smoke Grenade Rifle. And I very much enjoy playing as the Medic. Um, and hopefully this little guide has been useful to help you play as a as a better Medic. Get more points, get to the top of that leaderboard, get um, top squad, and uh, progress through Battlefield 5. But mainly have fun with uh, your teammates and with your squad. And enjoy what is turning out to be a much better game as dice improve it over the over the over the months anyway that's enough for me if you've got any more questions or comments put them down below um if you like the video hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and i will well i'll see you again soon